So what are your thoughts on, you know, uh, Abu Dhabi and the, and the wider UAE, Middle East region as an emerging crypto blockchain web three, you know, for well, like I, I made some remarks this morning about the culture because ultimately all of us have the same phone, we have the same desk, we have the same business card and the same pen. Um, but if you have a certain culture uh, where the culture is really ingrained in cooperation and the culture is ingrained in practicality and the spirit of innovation, mm -hmm. Um, great things can happen. And so the minister uh, this morning, Abdullah al Waktuk, said this morning that you had a 7.6% print on their GDP, uh, which is well ahead of what they had originally expected. So uh, this area of the world is growing for a number of different reasons, uh, but primarily because of the culture in places like the UAE. And so I'm very, very bullish on both Abu Dhabi and Dubai, the Greater Arab Emirates, also longer term on places like Saudi Arabia. So talking about being bullish, so in general, uh, do you think it would be wise to remain bullish in Web3 for, you know, uh, in the point of view of an investor? Well, so the short answer to the question is yes, but remember there's a tremendous amount of volatility when a technology is being adopted. Yes, exactly. That was true in the airline industry, it was true in the phone industry, the automobile industry, the internet, Web 1 in the year 2000, we had a big cra crisis and crash. Mm -hmm. And so as technologies are adopting, there's a group of naysayers that say that they don't work or they're impractical or stick with the old technology. And so they're usually wrong, mm -hmm. uh, but it takes a while to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Bitcoin is only 14 years old. And so let me just put this in perspective. The Wright brothers started flying in 1903. So 14 years later, in 1917, at the advent of the First World War, many people said that there would be no commercial applicability for aviation. Mm -hmm. uh, they were flying around in biplanes. Maybe that's a military mm -hmm. application, but very limited in terms yeah. of passenger aircraft mm -hmm. travel. But look at where we are today, 120 years after the Wright brothers. So I think people have a tendency to... Um, they overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what happens over 10 years. And so we just need to give it more time. Again, I'm remarkably bullish. Uh, we just went through a very big downturn in the industry. There was some fraud in the industry, not just Sam Bankman-Fried, but uh, things like Three Arrows. You had over leverage in areas of the businesses, the Terra Luna crash. All these things contributed to uh, the down cycle. Uh, and let's not forget the 500 basis point move by the Federal Reserve, which was literally the largest interest rate move in terms of the rapidity of the interest rates. You know, 500 basis points in 21 months, that's pretty rough on the market. It's pretty rough on macroeconomic activity. So you put everything into perspective. I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general have been remarkably sturdy given that economic backdrop and everything that I just said. So, yes, I'm very long-term bullish. So it's interesting you said, you know, the collapses, the bankruptcies of last year. So for Skybridge Capital, how was how were the events last year affected here? We got crushed. We had, I have one of the worst years. Of my, other than, thank God I didn't have a health problem. Like we had one of the worst years of my investment career. We got just about everything wrong. I could have been a monkey flipping coins mm -hmm. and had better outcomes, you know, and so we thought we were doing a lot of right things and we got a lot of things wrong, including my relationship with FTX and Sam Bankman Free, but I didn't see it at the time. And mm -hmm. so rather than go back uh, and rather than kick myself in the pants for getting some decisions wrong, I'm here building this conference. I'm here building our business. I'm here growing our uh, funds mm -hmm. and I'm very optimistic about the future. So I can't control what happened in the past. It's already <laughs> over. So, since you mentioned FTX and Magnum Feed, uh, if you may co uh, comment, no. um, what are your thoughts on Nishad Singh pleading guilty and SBF not pleading well, guilty? Well, you know, listen, I mean, Nishad is a young kid. I know him. Mm -hmm. I was with him on November the 8th in the Bahamas right before the bankruptcy went down. Uh, and I think what happened to Nishad and the whole ring of fraud, the whole circle of fraud is unconscionable. 
and he'll likely have to go to jail and pay a price for the malfeasance and what they did. And so there was a real betrayal there. Um, ultimately, I think Sam has made the decision that he's going to say that he's innocent because he wants to stay out of jail for as long as possible. But you can't have the four or the three or four people around you in your inner circle plead innocent and then pretend you're, I'm sorry, plead guilty and then pretend you're innocent. So, you know, when the, when the windows open and you hear clippity clop outside, it's a horse, it's not a zebra. Okay. So Sam obviously needs to own up to what he did and how he did it. And hopefully he'll do that soon. So to conclude this quick talk, huh? In one word, how can you describe this upcoming 2023 for the whole industry? I think it's a huge, well, I'm not going to say one word because I'm Italian. <laughs> I got to say 10 words. It's a recovery year and it's going to be a year of great optimism uh, and lots more adoption. So I'm very excited about what's happening. All right. Thank you so much for All your right, time. Good to be here.